Hello, Internet. I'm the Disney Brain, and I was surprised by just how much I enjoyed High Speed Parahero Gandin, one of this summer's off the beaten path Toku releases. If you haven't watched it yet, or haven't heard of it even, then don't worry, spoilers will be on the light side since this show doesn't really have much in the way of big twists or surprise reveals. Only so much you can do with three episodes. But ideally, some of you might become interested enough to give this show a chance once I've done the whole YouTuber video essay thing that I do. So with all that said, I'd like to dig into the handful of aspects that convinced me that Gandine is arguably the best toku show this year. Let's first talk a bit about the premise and about Daishi, the man at the center of it all. For those of you who routinely run through the tokusatsu circuit, know your eyes are not lying to you, Daishi is in fact portrayed by So Okuno, who notably played Sogo in Kamen Rider Geo. Now, a lot of shows of this ilk, specifically of the Toei variety which Gandine does not fall under, have what I charitably call a complicated relationship with underserved or marginalized populations, so there was always the chance that Daishi being paraplegic could come laced with any number of potentially uncomfortable ableist messages from writers who, frankly, might just not know any better. But I don't think that's what happened here, and what's more, I was pleasantly surprised by their desire to take time away from the more special effects driven aspects of the show to spotlight the mechanics involved in Daishi's training. His trainer here, Fukai, is able to have a really enlightening conversation with another para-athlete about how differently his body works in spite of how similar his circumstance is to Daishi's. That quick hit of sports physiology made me appreciate his desire to train a lot more, and also speaks a lot to Fukai as a fabulous character in her own right. And overall, I think Daishi strikes this really solidly written balance between how his various circumstances, aspirations, and personality traits all coalesce. And his being Gandine, a hero form that comes from space, where he aspires to go, and also requires him to work with his disability and not magically overcome it, ends up working really well because of that. And speaking of space, which is awesome, I think that central guiding goal does well to highlight a lot of what I liked about the general tonality of this show. Generally speaking, I tend to feel pretty bogged down by the modern, traditional toku hero who screams their philosophies in our face for 22 minutes at a time, but I enjoyed the more muted optimism here. There's an energy to this show that would almost trick you into thinking that Koichi Sakamoto directed it in secret, though, in fairness, it does feel exceedingly more attuned to his sensibilities than anything I've seen from the show he's actually directing right now. For example, deciding to shoot a damn rocket they made in their garage at the alien invader on a whim just to help out Daishi. But that same energy doesn't overwhelm the way Yukiko Manabe's screenplay seems intended to work. So it does evoke some of the aspects I love about a show like Forze, but in a way that speaks more to Manabe's J-drama writing roots. And it creates a couple moments throughout where the emotions feel more grounded and expressed through details, as directly opposed to overwriting them and then potentially losing the intended effect altogether. There is no shortage of shows in this genre where I'd argue that the humor or the tone work against the series at points, but here I think they struck a good balance. Though I would say, speaking again to the space detail, that even though it's not an overly emphasized aspect of Daishi's character, and doesn't have to be, he does straight up meet an alien, and it's peculiar that his experience with Gu, mixed in with also fighting aliens, doesn't do much to adjust or speak to his goals concerning the Great Beyond. A Great Beyond that suddenly, by the very nature of events, has at least some context for what exists out there. That could just be the relatively low three episode count rearing its head, and keeping them from digging too far into that area, especially since they are clearly looking towards a season two that I hope they get. But for all the bromance moments we see from them, it does strike me as a little bit odd that Daishi doesn't take the chance to ask Gu more about what it's like beyond Earth. Speaking of Gu, the supporting cast for this show in general is pretty fantastic, but also speak a lot to my favorite points regarding tone and writing. I talked briefly about Fukai, but to expand, I enjoyed how she brought a commanding yet charmingly introspective take on things. She obviously could never fully understand what Daishi has to go through compared to her own time as an athlete, 
but as I mentioned, she works harder after accepting him to understand. And even with very brief glances into her complicated past on the matter, it still says a lot more about her feelings on competition and work ethic than any poorly structured monologue ever could. We don't get nearly as much from the sort of pit crew as it were, but I think they speak to another idea that I really liked in this show regardless of how intentional it might have been. So with the character of Goo, we eventually come to learn that his home, called Alert Star, is being ravaged by the Eltron, the species our big bad lady general comes from. There is no additional context for any of that, since the general in question isn't presented as much more than a figure of intimidation to this point. But what's undeniably clear is that the Eltrons position themselves as something of a master race of their planet and have been killing off Goo's race specifically because it isn't theirs. So while their intergalactic socio-political leanings can only be inferred for the time being, the show is very direct about Goo's people being targeted strictly on the basis of race. I don't mind how this plot point barely registers to the cast, despite its alarming specificity, because of how it juxtaposes against what the rest of the show implies, primarily through Goo. Because how fitting is it that this remarkably diverse group of characters would just naturally take to Goo? How perfect is it that the seamless way the Eltrons of his world are presented as out-and-out -out racists is countered by the seamless, barely spoken way Goo's alien nature is almost immediately accepted here. This is also why I'm not too broken up about what Goo is meant to more literally say about Daishi's space travel dreams, because on some level, the natural brotherhood of sorts he develops with him seems to fill that void. It can be argued that his need to protect Gu, in part because of his alien nature, grants him a far more empathetic view of the great beyond that couldn't have existed before. And I can at least buy into that potentially being the point, since the show trusts its audience enough to know that what Gu gains on Earth directly relates to what he lost on Alert Star, and they do so without the need for 5 million flashbacks that beg you to feel things and remind you of details the story can easily imply just by, you know, telling the story. So if I had to point to the biggest reason I enjoyed Gandine, that might be it. More than the fun moments or fun characters, I really like what it had to say just all around about a large variety of people being supportive and accepting of each other as the default state, and all without the need to overly define them by whatever their most notable trait happens to be to the point of caricature. That was especially important to get right in a series like this, and I think it does. All in all, Parahiro Gandine isn't necessarily going to blow you away with its writing, or its very subdued character work, or even its action, though all of those things are points in its favor from where I'm standing. But even though it's not trying too hard to punch above its weight class, I think it really is the little things, the small details, the flourishes here and there, that makes this wildly short show seem so much larger. It's light, it's simple, it's very to the point, and they made all of that work for them in ways that other shows might struggle with. All this to say that if you haven't seen it, and have been looking for a toku that's a little more laid back in the best kind of way, give Gandine a go. It just might be your speed. Pun intended, as always. Hope you guys enjoyed my relatively short dig into more of a hidden gem in the toku sphere. There's a couple more in that broad category that I'd also like to discuss down the line, so let me know if you want more of that by way of liking and sharing this video and mas. Suggestions are always appreciated as well, even if they can't always be acted on. And until then, thanks for watching.